Hey guys, uh, welcome back to the channel. And today we're doing an interview with Marcel. He is a good friend of mine that I met online. He's been doing photography for a few years now and he is from Germany. Uh, so go ahead and just take it off Marcel. Give us a little bit of information about yourself and we'll go from there. Well, hello guys, I'm Marcel and I'm 21 years old. Um, I live close to Lübeck in the north of Germany and I've known Seth for like two years now and I've followed his steps on YouTube and now he invited me to do an interview and so I said yes and now we're here. Yeah, so this is the first time we've, I've done an interview on this channel and I've been wanting to branch out and try to start some type of uh, new series and keep the channel as consistent as I can and Marcel and I were chatting on Facebook and we came up with the idea of doing an interview so like he said, here we are. And I'm just going to start asking Marcel a few questions about himself and get some of his own personal take on some things specific, specifically to sports photography. But first, I'd like to ask you, Marcel, is how did you first get started in photography in general? Like, what got you into photography as a whole? Well, as a kid, I used to play soccer or as we call it football and i think we keep it like that is that right yeah well i mean actually as i clicked on the football link i was expecting american football and then i saw soccer i was like oh wait yeah that's right they that's that is their football so just as a disclaimer to all the viewers that when we when he says football and i say football for this uh it will be regarding soccer well i, I used to play uh, in the club of this village and I played like soccer or football as we want to keep it for eight years in the club. So I already had some sort of binding to sports. And I also already had like always the interest in, in photographs. And the passion from there on was like sports photography. And I, I took some pictures of some friends at like a skate park and then I visited my old club and took pictures there with like an elf, uh, 1100D, with, with, which is like a, a beginner camera. Mm -hmm. And I still enjoyed like taking the pictures and I got more and more into it. And as time went on, I got some more gear and I spent like nearly every day at the skate park and every weekend at the football field and took pictures and school came to an end and then I thought, well, it's my passion right now, so why don't make it a career and a profession? That's really interesting actually. And um, So you said you started out with more of a cheaper end camera at first, like naturally. Uh, that's typically how most people will start out and I want to know what in what point did you know that you wanted to make it a career like how far were you into it and just photography as a whole did make you decide i want to do it as a career um i think it was like about one year of uh, taking photos nearly every day and at least every weekend and i already had like a 7d and i think it was a 55 to 250 millimeter back then mm -hmm. like two or three hundred bucks for that lens telephoto lens and I've already shot for an online magazine here and as I said then school came to an end and I thought I'd give it a go and started right into it as a career that's really cool um, so what made you want to do sports photography in particular as a career and not any other type of photography I'm like I'm sure you've branched out and tried occasionally some other types of portraits or th those sort of things I'm sure but I mean strictly just being as the main career you're focusing on sports photography as I am so out of curiosity why sports for you specifically sports well as I mentioned I, I played uh, football as a kid and my whole family has been sports related. I mean, uh, my grandfather and my grandmother played handball, both in a club. My father used to play football in a club as well. And I just got there and played football as well. 
and it's where I started uh, taking photos. So um, I, uh, I sort of always had like a relation to sports in general. Yeah, that's sort of how it worked out for me too. I mean, when I first picked up a camera uh, about five or six years ago, max, uh, I was just taking pictures of random sort of things and then I don't remember why exactly, but I just decided to go to a high school football game and just photograph it and went from there. So it's kind of similar. Um, the next thing I want to ask is, uh, as of now, who do you work for mainly and how did you get the job? Well, I have to pronounce it in German. Okay, right now I'm working fine. for Bild Agentur Fotostand, um, which is like middle to lower upper class in German and Germany to, to put it at a rank. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have like bigger wire services and agencies, sort of like Getty Germany and like DPA is over here. And sometimes we have some AFP and some Associated Press photographers, but that's really occasionally. And I got the job by actually photographing like, uh, it was an away game from a club I cover here in the north. And they played in Osnabrück, a city that is in like, yeah, the middle of Germany, or rather the north of the middle. <laughs> Sounds stupid, but that's the way it is. <laughs> um, and I was there for my old company that I took photographs for, which wasn't that much of a career just yet, like just a starter level. And right there I met a guy that I just clicked with instantly. We liked each other and he hit me up later, like a week or two after the game and offered me to join his company. And from there on we had like two months of months of actually negotiating the contract. And on January 1st, I started there. And since then I've been covering like um, the top leagues in football, handball, ice hockey, second league in American football, which isn't that big in Germany but all kinds of top-notch sports in Germany, such as also the EHF Final Four and EHF Champions League, which is like the best thing you can achieve in European uh, club handball. Mm -hmm. And I've also had the chance to cover one game of the Champions League in football. Wow. Uh, and as far as... I mean, any foreign country goes, uh, with Germany in particular, since you're from here, um, you have unique sports that we typically don't have out here in the United States. So I wanted to ask you about uh, handball, as we see yeah. the photographs on here. I can actually move over to that specific sport right here. Uh, just tell us a little bit about handball and the sport itself, and what are, what's a challenge that you have to face while photographing this? Well, handball is very emotional. That's why you will see some celebrations. And on the other hand, it's just not just emotions, but also physical sport. Um, because you have like seven guys on the field, one goalkeeper and six field players. Mm -hmm. And you try to get the ball in the goal by hand, as you can see. And the defending six players are trying to block you out of a circle in front of the net, which is like seven meters, just like the penalty area in, in soccer as well, or rather in football. And sometimes those two sides clash into each other. I think we'll have a photo of that in just a moment. And well, it, it gets really physical. And on the other hand, that's sort of the problem with taking photos of it as well, because you have like two to four guys in a really small area and one tries to jump. So you have like half a second to get the focus right and take the photo before he throws the ball. Um, yeah. So that's quite challenging. Yeah, I often really refer to it as hard as like ice hockey, because you have only a split second to take the photo and usually one or two people blocking your shot Yes, yeah. With ice hockey, it's I can see that being very similar because of the speed of the game and 
how, like you said, it's just like in a blink of an eye, the, the play happens and you only have that split second to f- use your autofocus to get it right. Yeah. That's super interesting. These are really nice photos and I'm hoping that all the viewers that are checking this out to learn a lot from this and seeing the way that he's framing his images, the way that he's got the bokeh in the background to isolate his subjects, the way that he's framing his images nicely and very tight so there's less distraction and you know exactly what you're supposed to be, uh, what's supposed to be drawing your attention towards. Um, you, you can see it, the consistency that he has in his images. And I mean, that it is what it is. This is the kind of shots that are your bread and butter. And while covering these events, you need to get stuff like this where whether it's just a clean stock image like this one of this player here, very clean background, there's no distractions. Um, and it's very tough at events like this. How are the, like at this kind of event, how, how many uh, like billboards do you have with all the advertisements and stuff? Because that's a big issue over here. I assume that, that soccer or any sporting event that you cover that you run into that kind of issue. Yeah, it's, it's all about the place. I mean, it's uh, on three or four quarters on the, on the pitch. The only exception is like the area where the coaches and uh, players rest. But even there, there's some kinds of advertisements. And nowadays they also have this 3D thingy with like LEDs on it and oh, it also it also takes away the white balance sometimes, so yeah, you can see it in this image in the background where it's like the LEDs over here. Yeah, yeah, like we have that too out here for like LA Galaxy. They they got the LED advertisements, and it just it's a pain in the ass. Um, okay, so moving on to the next question that I wanted to ask is, what is your favorite sport to photograph? Like, what makes it your favorite sport as well? That's kind of a tough question, but I think. If I have to give like a top three or top four, it's going to be soccer because it's my type of sport. I've always been into that and um, I've played it for eight years and I like to see it on TV. I just can't get enough of it, <laughs> <laughs> except uh, seeing Bayern Munich win the title every year. At least that's what it feels like. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Um, I like photographing handball and ice hockey, both because of the pace of the game, because of the physical aspect of the game, and it's challenging to photograph. Um, and then I like, I, I really enjoy American football. On the one hand, it's like a really physical game as well, but on the other hand, it's sort of aesthetic, because you get like some majestic moments where you have the quarterback and the receiver in one line and you can see where the pass is going to or where it's coming from and with some nice light added to the scene you really get an amazing photograph right yeah like i've seen some photos over at like the dallas cowboy stadium there's this one where the photographer is laying down on his stomach with the 7200 i believe he used and there's a the sun is setting and you have like uh, pieces of light just coming in inside the stadium and it's just a really gorgeous shot and I'm, I'm sure that's what you're referring to is when if the lighting's right you can capture some really great images for that particular sport um, so for the next question I wanted to ask is uh, what camera gear do you use? Do you use Canon, Nikon? Uh, either way what lenses are you typically bringing for your daily assignment or daily game that you're covering? Well I'm a Canon photographer Okay. There's no reason behind that. I just chose Canon in first place and then I stuck to it. Um, by now, the two main cameras I'm using are 1DX and a 5D Mark III. And the go-to lenses are the 400 millime- millimeter 2.8 IS Mark II, 70-200, uh, 2.8 IS Mark II, 24 to 70, again the 2.8 version with Mark II. Then there's the 16 to 35 millimeter. It's again the f2.8 version Mark II as well. And now I've come to get the chance to use the 35 millimeter. I think it's a 1.4 or 1.8 of Sigma as well. Mm. And for some shots, that one is really interesting because you have like way lower aperture than aperture than normal, 
and it's, it's sort of tricky but sometimes funny to use right now uh, occasionally I just got to test out the 135 millimeter prime lens which is f2.0 and I really like that one for handball I've heard great things about that lens, but I've still I have yet to use that lens. So I've heard it's incredibly sharp at 2.0. It is. You can see one picture of that in the handball section. Is it? Um, let me go look there. Hold on. Move over. Yeah, that's one. This you one. Positive. Not. Nah. I've saw. Yeah, this this is the one with 2.0. Wow. And you have to imagine it's, uh, I've got the EXIF in my head, um, it's 1 one thousandth at f2.0 with ISO 1000 only indoors. I'm not going to lie, I thought that was taken with a 400. <laughs> no, it's the 135. I mean, and that, <clears throat> how much cropping was done to this? It looks like little to none, honestly. It's little to none. Yeah. Like, because the quality of maximum five percent. Yeah, I could. You can tell right away. Even like with top end cameras, you can tell when it's heavily cropped. The detail in his face and all the sweat. I mean, those the One DX is a fantastic camera to use for cropping heavily. But even so, you you can tell when it's cropped heavily. But this is a good example of like letting our viewers know that you know having a 400 to 8 is fantastic but there are times where i mean it's just going to be too close and if you're one of the people that are struggling financially and can't afford the that kind of distance or like the 2 8 for night games i mean marcel just captured an image here where the action was close enough and he barely even had to crop it on a full frame at 135 millimeters so i mean it's not always needed to have that type of reach and if you are struggling with that reach just be patient and wait for the action to come to you don't be firing away if they look like ants in the frame this is a prime example of that um so for the next question i mean you sound like just like me how you just have a whole arsenal of lenses and you're pretty much like set um, but if you had a day where you just got a pile of money thrown at you and someone said you can get any single lens that you could ever want, which one would it be and why? I mean, you're right. I have a whole lot of arsenal, even though some of those lenses are borrowed from a friend or something like that. Right. I've yet to rent one, luckily, <laughs> so I didn't lose any money yeah. <laughs> except for the ones that I bought. Um, well, I think the 200 to 400 of Canon is yeah. something that I'd be interested yeah. in. Mm -hmm. Alternatively, I'd like to try a 500 millimeter because most of the Getty stuff photographers change to that because 400 on a, on a full frame sensor sometimes doesn't make the cut, especially in soccer or rather football. Um, if you go on like sideline action, Example given, you want to have some facial expression of a coach. 400 sometimes isn't uh, enough as well. So I, I'd love to try the 500, but for general use, I probably prefer the 200 to 400. Yeah, I've I've been debating between that and the 600 as like if I had the money. Um, like for me, like as of now, I'm I'm perfectly fine with what what would I own. I don't feel like a two to four is necessary. As of now and like a 600 i feel like it's just extra but yeah. i mean if if the money was there and i had to choose between those two that's a tough call i would probably say two to four hundred because of the versatility because the 600 is more of like a very specific lens it's more of like a yeah. like a I, i'll always look at the 600 almost as like a macro lens for sports photography because <laughs> it's really like i only could see myself using that for detailed stuff like a shot i've always wanted to get um is like the picture when at, for baseball or softball and when the, the pitcher has the ball behind him just up against mm -hmm. his back and get like a super super close up just very close detail shot of just his hand with the ball behind his back blurred out background but I can't get that with a 400 it's just not possible because he's just too far and the ball is such a tiny subject it you have it's like a bird you have to get really close even with a 400 yeah. so but like for, an extender won't make the cut either I guess yeah it, it won't I've tried before and it's like for even even with that type of shot in my mind, that's not worth forking out twelve grand for that kind of shot, you know. 
Like, while I may be a cool shot to get and some other, sh you can get some cool stuff with it, it's just not something that I feel like I would lug around with me to like a baseball game for using it for a shot or two, you know? Yeah, exactly. So I would see myself being on the same boat as you is two to 400 is probably the next one if I had the money for it. I see it as a very versatile lens. Um, okay, so we're pretty much wrapping this up soon here, but I do have a few more questions here. Um, so I think something the viewers would be curious to know if they're not from Germany or from Europe is uh, how's the market in your location? What are the pros and cons and just the challenges all in all over there? Well, first thing that comes to mind is that there are quite a few photographers at every game. Like the good times, so to speak, are over. You have like, on average, I think 20 plus photographers at each event. So considering there won't be that much newspapers, the um, ratio between spots to publish in and guys that are taking photos is quite narrow. Yeah. <laughs> so it's always tough to get the spot in the newspaper and make money. Um, and then you have like some, some wire services that provide their clients with like low money amounts for for every picture they take, so to speak. Um, and yeah, I mean, you, you can work with it. It's not too bad in Germany, except for Berlin, which is highly competitive. Right. Um, but in the north of Germany, the photographers, and that's definitely a pro, are very friendly to each other and helpful. And the working conditions mostly are nice, except for less space than usually, like on average. But at the higher events, yeah, you, you got to deal with it, I guess. Yeah, it, it's pretty similar then in, in that sense for uh, out here in America where, you know, I'm going to a game. Back when I used to do wire services, I would go to a game and there's easily 30 plus photographers there covering it. And yeah. that's your competition. You have Getty, USA Today, uh, LA Times, uh, AP, uh, just other newspapers there. Uh, it's just everyone's there covering it. And even if yeah. it's a small game, there's there's still a handful of people there. And when it's a bigger game, you're pretty much shoulder to shoulder with photographers. And if there's like the play happening and one photographer doesn't turn to follow that play, like a, a, at a football game, for instance, you're turning, following the person with the ball going to kick kick it in for a goal and one of the guys just doesn't turn with it to follow it then all the people behind him going this way is trying to turn and being blocked by a 400 millimeter yeah exactly it's it's a pain in the ass um the, that in that sense it sounds very similar i mean in terms of getting like the it job is, you, you in terms of getting the job that you got how how difficult was it for you to get that job did it take months did it take over a year well in terms of the first offer I got, it was like a few months, mm -hmm. months, and second offer was like close to a year into it. And by now I've already gotten more offers, only though that I've been in the new company for like half a year. But the higher you get, the easier it really is to stay in the game, if, if I'm honest. Because you get to know each other, you, you know that you provide a certain amount of quality pictures each game so they know that they can rely on you if you would join the company. So you sort of get more offers the higher you are at. I see. That is pretty much who you know um, and showing commitment and showing dedication uh, with any job for that matter. But I mean, it, it's very important in this type of field is if you are committed and showing commitment and dedication to a company, uh, working your way up, may take you know years it could take months it, it it doesn't matter it but all in all as long as they see effort it's it's very key because that's how you become successful in this type of field because i mean you could be a great photographer but if you don't know the right people or you aren't branching out and reaching out to certain people then you really won't get anywhere as brutal as that may sound it's just the way it is it is um I think that's pretty much it for the questions, but uh, just for the conclusion of this video, uh, is there anything that you wanted to say before we shut this out um, to our viewers at all? Any advice you would want to give them? Well, in terms of advice, I, I 
probably put it like this. If you're, and that's what the channel of you is dedicated to, sort of get into a career, right? Yeah. If you want to make sports photography your job, you gotta be passionate about sports and sports photography in general. And you just gotta work your way up. You have to be patient. You have to be passionate about everything. You have to give your best at every gig you do. And in the end, it's your name underneath the picture they put in the newspaper or on the website. So it should be your goal to achieve the best result possible that is being displayed because that will make your way way easier. Yeah. yeah, I can fully agree with that. It's very important that you put, give it your all when you're on assignment or even if you're just going out as, you know, for your own personal self, just put all the effort that you can into it because that is how you're going to be able to create uh, images like the ones that Marcel is displaying here. Um, I, mean, I, I couldn't put it in any other better way, honestly. Um, so I think that's pretty much going to wrap it up for the interview, guys. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, this isn't going to be the last time you'll be seeing Marcel. I'm also going to be uh, doing a portfolio review uh, in the near future where I'll be going over his best shots and giving him some constructive criticism on the shots. And there'll be plenty other videos with him in it too, I'm, I'm sure of it. Uh, Marcel, thank you for joining us and thank you for sharing your, uh, your view on sports photography and sharing your photos and giving us your point of view on these type of things. And I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for having me.